Hello everybody and I'm sure you did miss us and we're back today we are here with Dan who gonna show you how to use the profiler but first let's actually let's count the profilers because we have more than one yes how many profilers do we have <laughs> it's this looks like a web profiler to me yes this is the web profiler that's available when you run the engine and the engine serves as a web server so you just point your browser to the engine's address uh, mm -hmm. a certain point port it's in the documentation and it actually takes 20 snapshots of e of a number of frames yeah. consecutive snap 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 so right. it, and then right. you can navigate through this so this is one we have like the docs how to use that yes but then we have more yes and uh, this what we're showing today is the new and improved in-game profiler well that's default editor yes and when if you launch the program you have the trust the old geometry wars. right but that's the game what is the profiler the profiler uh, first of all the profiler is always included in the game unless you explicitly remove it it's okay. not shown but it's continuously profiling right now but we're talking about the debug versions of the game right yes if you do a release version bundle release mm -hmm. or do your own custom app manifest you mm -hmm. can remove it okay but so by default it's there right just yeah. silently profiling the game yes. while you're doing something else yes and you can enable the the ui by using the lua api profiler dot set UV okay mode. So, so by default there are no key bindings to open up the profiler so no, what you you've done you open up a script yeah. and just added Add some a little a one liner that says when i press space show the profile right so i've counted two profilers that mm. are built into default do you have <laughs> more uh, we have this is the timing profile. We also have in the web profile we have the resource profiler, which shows what kind of resources you have loaded and stuff like that. And, uh, and that's what we're not covering today. Yes. But this one, so this one, I see engine frame and it takes so much time. Yes. And it's also so very hard to look what's. Yes, this is uh, you, the g game keeps running in the background mm -hmm. and just drawing the profile on top of it. Top left, you can see uh, the frame time, not frame rate. So how long uh -huh. did the frame yeah. take? And next to it, uh, a sliding window. The last second, the highest frame took this long. Okay. So you have a side view if there's peaks in the frame rate. But it's so hard to look at yeah. or something. Yes, in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's moving on. You can toggle it on off. Mm -hmm. and it's yeah, using that API yeah. will show the docs later, but like yes. you can look into the docs yourself. But yes, what you can also pause it with the same kind of Lua API. Yeah. I bound it to key as well. Woo. And now top at the top it says post. Uh huh. And uh, you see a number of things. You see the top left something called yeah. scopes, the kind of categories of stuff the engine is mm -hmm. doing. The engine is like the entire frame what it's doing. Uh, frame as in whatever game engine does or, yeah. or whatever my scripts do uh, the entire what the engine does wh running this the scripts and everything and then just displaying it so it's okay. from the start it, it it's uh, rendering yeah. it's script so it, all the logics all yeah. the physics yes. like whatever yeah it's from how long it takes um, oh I need to do one more frame with game logic yeah. rendering and everything how long do it take until I showed it to the user okay okay so it's kind of close to 16 milli milliseconds yeah. and that's because we're actually waiting for the frame refresh and that's mm -hmm. included in the wait time. There's another, mm -hmm. so we see the V-Sync, that's yeah. the time it's waiting to display the frame. Right, so that's our remaining budget pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. W so within the current uh, frame rate. Yeah, exactly. And there's the number like game object, like script is taking two milliseconds, render script is the script. Is, so it's a number of categories of stuff. If like scripts physics. are separate, what does the game object mean? Uh, it's like transform and Kay. stuff like Transforms. general management of game object. Um, Instancing? Instance yeah, yeah, yeah. Loading yeah. them to memory? Yeah. Or uh, yeah, it's basically all that kind. We don't have uh, like the resources really yeah. as a scope. Uh, that's usually handled in the background thread. But it's a, it's a number of scopes. Um, I don't think we, we like model this 
is not very much. We don't have much models and stuff, and particles and stuff. Models that smash us, as yes. I understand, like yes. mesh transforms. Yeah, and physics. We're not doing much physics. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Profile. Did you mention the profile between message and model? Oh, and message. Yeah, message. message uh, that all the messaging criteria. Yeah, like the, the when you run the script, you can push a number of, of messages, and it's just consuming those messages. How long did it take to process all like messages to in a frame? To process or to process. To process. To to process. Yeah, so yes. And they're separate from scripts. So that's yeah, the script, script generate messages, and then later on in the frame, we're processing that. And how long right. does that take? So scripts. Uh, um, script is like the update function. Right. Yeah. yeah. And whenever the message is called from the script, it's shown in the under the message scope. Uh, it's kind of th those are kind of on top of and including yeah. each other. It's just more of a general. So the overlap. Overview, a bit. Yeah. So uh, it can be like, let's see, for some for example, a script run script. Yeah. That's the scope. But inside that scope, uh -huh. we're doing. Uh, like game object script and on uh -huh. update, so you can see this uh -huh. is like a funnel down to more details. Right. So th these are not like engine includes VSync I and see. stuff like that. So it's it's kind of more cat broad right. categories. So like if in order in uh, in order to get sixteen point eight mm. to nine milliseconds, mm. I have to sum up all of this. Yes. And then I get in order to get uh, to eleven, I have to sum up all of this. It's not entirely true as well, okay. as, um, because uh, you can have like on the top level is engine, yeah. and inside you're doing vSync, yeah. but inside that you're doing game object, and inside uh, so uh -huh. there's like scopes oh or okay. kind of abstract. It's more to get a sense like oh the physics is taking 15 milliseconds. There's something with the physics I need to check, Good. and to check more details you have the mm -hmm. samples graph. You also have the counters, mm -hmm. stuff like memory usage, or you using up LURFs, like adding callbacks that are not collected or uh, creating stuff that you don't right. dispose of. Going into the details of them is not uh, like a bit out of scope. Good, but okay. Fine. But you can see there's quite a lot of, this game is actually very message heavy. Mm -hmm. It's doing a lot of stuff with message, so each frame it's sending 347 messages. Okay. So that's quite a lot. So yeah, those are the messages that come from scripts. As yeah, as I exactly. And the, the design of this game is very uh, like every like little black hole yeah. sends message and is passing stuff to uh, to interact. So, hmm. um, but this is like counters, and the it's it's the same. If you see something just continuously growing or having really high numbers, you can get an indication of what your game is doing and what's taking time. But what you can really see more details is the samples, mm -hmm. where you see the engine frame takes 16 milliseconds, yeah. weight takes 11. Engine sim is basically the overarching game logic scope, where you do messages and uh, script update functions, like simulating the game world is taking. Is this in the docs? Uh, I don't think the dem details. This has been very for us as developers a mm -hmm. lot. Uh, what you care probably more about yeah. is stuff like that start with script dot something. So you can oh see right. so guess that's your code. Uh huh. Because like as a as a default user I cannot really do much about no. whatever engine does. No. I can break on the forums. No, but, but the engine sim thing, you affect how long that time takes if you have a lot of stuff going on yeah. in the engine, a lot of game objects, it's gonna take longer time. Uh -huh. But you can't really yeah. You can't optimize that, dude. What you can do is. So if this number grows, then I should like check. Yeah, if then you should take details mm -hmm. further down. Like, like you can see. What have I done in yeah. my game that yes. is harder for the engine to, to chew my game? Yes, exactly. So you have uh, like the script dot update is the update function of the mm -hmm. script energy enemy slash chaser dot script. It takes 0 0.608 milliseconds and it's called 20 to 8 times each uh -huh. frame. Yeah, that's a lot. So yeah, that, that's, that's a fair, do fair bit, but uh, as you see, it's kind of high frame rate anyway. So mm -hmm. okay, um, I'll show you a bit more details about those later. Good. Just wanna check where we are. Um, yeah, and we uh, have a little plan here. Yeah, I have a plan so I don't miss all the stuff. That right, we but I'm going totally off the script. Yeah. Uh, to confuse then. Yes. So we have this. The default layout for uh, for uh, landscape kind of desktop 
game uh -huh. set up. It was added so if you do more mobile or portrait mode, it rearranges everything so you still kind of use the screen estate, otherwise the timeline would be yeah, really small if you mm -hmm. So it does that for you. It is nothing nothing you can control. You can just on and off and it looks at the aspect yeah. ratio. Try okay. to try to be friendly so okay. present it as much as you can. Uh, we talked a bit about the uh, engine frame and the mm -hmm. weight. As you see, it takes a lot of time just waiting. Yeah. So the details in here in the timeline is kind of screwed. Yeah, screwed yeah. a bit. So there's another uh, command from Lua to hide that, mm -hmm. to not show that in the graph. Yeah. It's still there, but by removing it, you can actually see yeah. more details. Just, uh, what just what better. Yeah, uh, using this, this the screen state mm -hmm. a bit more. and. You can see here when we unfold this, you see script on message that this is actually a, not a long, like if you did go back, it looks like, yeah. oh, we did something that took a really yeah. long time, but you see it, there's lots of small okay. measurements. Right. So you can see it more details. Just different perspectives. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So okay. that's kind of handy. So if we now, we, now it's paused, and if we try to to start it again, I actually hit it, but you can just unpause it. And we're running, and you can, you know, here as well, you can hide the wait time, so you, uh, uh -huh. so you can see it. But the, as you said before, it's kind of moving around, and yeah. you, you can pause and see the last frame, but that's kind of interesting. Right. What you really often is interesting is some frame just did something that mm -hmm. caused stutter or something. Yeah. So we have this mode that's called show peak frame. All oh right. So I can only see spikes. Yeah. So what it does is, is it pauses on the current frame, and then it measures as new frames come yeah. in. It measures how long did this take, excluding the frame wait time. So that's see, is that long longer? I'll show that. So it continuously shows the slowest frame uh, as it's running, and see now it's right. Uh, still, and I can actually force yeah. it to do bad thing. And we see here, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. when a frame that takes 37 yeah. milliseconds, something bad happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's still, and we can go in and see that oh, the run script takes a long time. Dispatch me, so okay. Yeah, run script. That's the script the in the game. Yeah, that's all the script. Right. And but what's interesting here is script dot on message recalibrate mm -hmm. is taking 32 milliseconds, and it's called one time. Uh -huh. So obviously something yeah. is wrong with that function. It shouldn't behave like that. Uh, so you might want to. So as you see this, like you go into a script and see what what is happening. You cannot like the profiler cannot pinpoint the exact line in the script. No. But it's it's a nice way to understand like yeah. where do we dig? Where do yeah. we start digging? Yes, exactly. So if we continue, um, we uh, also have one final function to show today. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of tied into the peak, and it's recording. So you can actually start recording uh, all the single frames as the game is playing. Okay. I'm bound at the key as well. It's just yeah. one, a one-liner. And if I enable it, you see in the top left that it yeah. starts telling how many frames it has yeah. recorded. So it continues recording. And what's what you can do is also minimize the profiler. Uh -huh. So it's running in the back, more on in the background. You can see your game and the profiler rendering overhead is nothing. And to I guess this is useful to kind of take snapshots of performance to compare yeah. over time. Uh, yeah, exactly. If I, um, if I'm, if for example, I know if I if I do this click, click, and click. Yeah, it behaves kind of strange. Yeah, from a frame rate perspective. I can record and do click, 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 and then I can go back and inspe inspect every individual frame mm -hmm. to see. Not necessarily that you just one peak frame. You might want to see, okay, it's behaving badly over a number of frames. Okay. So okay. once you pause, you see the last frame in the recording buffer, and you can go back and just yeah. stepping back over each frame. Yeah. And you can also go forward and you can go mm -hmm. to a specific frame. So right. So there is no separate reader for no. the recorded frames. It's no. like within the scope. Can you save this recording? Not currently, but it's something we want to build. We both want to build uh, streaming to the web profiler so yeah. you can just continuously to see from the web profiler without cluttering the UI or streaming it down to, uh, to a file on the device would be mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Or over to HTTPS yeah. to some server or something. It's not there yet. 
but something we're thinking about adding. adding. Uh, so now we're running out of our dedicated time, but mm. I still have so much questions. For example, like the color coding. It seems to be color coded. It's kind of it's based on actually the name of the th of, of the sample, like particle dot update that makes it a certain color. So yeah. you, it's easier to track. Right. Instead of just like it w used to be random colors flick flicking about. Oh, I see. So it's not color coding; it's just for uh, yeah, just for reference. Just so I can do pretty much. Yeah. So if you go to the next frame, you can see it's easier to see how round yeah. script is moving if uh -huh. it has the same color each yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's not okay. Not this is useful. Haven't thought about that actually. Yeah. Um, so what is the main difference between this? like built-in profiler and the web profiler? Like when would I use one, when would I use another? Uh, the web profiler takes like 20 snapshots, like frame, 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 frame. Not exactly each frame, but yeah. 20 times. Yeah. And it has all the details uh, of all the functions mm -hmm. all the time, and it's it's presented in a different, different, bit different mm -hmm. format. It also snapshots the resource part. Mm -hmm. This is more useful for seeing like frame stuttering or stuff like that, because mm -hmm. you can see every individual right. frame, which you can't with the web profiler. So the web profiler more taking a snapshot, like what happens mm -hmm. kind of now, mm -hmm. and this is continuously measuring. The This is just the presentation. Yeah. Because yeah. the profiler yeah. is always yeah. measuring, unless you explicitly disable it. So yeah. it's uh, measuring every frame, everything, and it's very uh, low overhead. So. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say it's more of a presentation thing. I would like to like connect them a bit more, like yeah. uh, like saving and s looking in the web profile and stepping actually on each frame and digging a bit deeper. Right. So do have good docs on that because I mean obviously we're not able to touch everything and to talk about everything in this video because you're gonna get bored <laughs> <laughs> and stop watching. We we'll measure this on YouTube, so like if the video is longer than 15 minutes, then you stop watching. So we don't do these long videos anymore. Yes. Uh, the default uh, API reference as a now a profiler scope. It used to be just get CPU usage, uh -huh. and get memory usage. It now has more functions like for the UI, yeah. in-game UI, to, yeah. uh, to enabling it and uh, showing presentation modes and stuff like that and recording. And everything is, nothing is hard-coded as you said, mm -hmm. to keys or anything. It's just you do it yourself so you can build your own profiler controlling UI in-game. Yeah, and share this on the asset portal, by the way. Yes, if you want. Yeah. 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 yeah, and um, so this is documentation for uh, mm -hmm. this, the function Lua functions, yeah. and yeah, this is the profiler. There's some general information on profiling in the on the site as mm -hmm. well, so you, that you can look into. But that is cool. Uh, anything that we forgot to talk about today, I or are we good? Yeah, I think this is what we wanted to cover. Now. Yeah, so you can clap then now, and uh, thank you for watching, and yeah, thank you then. Thanks. Bye.